Welcome to the Phil Taylor Jones Show. Today we're going to be talking about uh, money. You know, that green stuff that most of us have a hard time keeping in our hands, yet others seem to have loads of it and just squander it away. How many times have you ever thought to yourself, boy, if I had the kind of money that they're wasting, what I would do with it? I'm Phil Taylor Jones, your host, and I guess we can all kind of make wish lists, uh, wish lists today ourselves. Boy, I tell you, when you start thinking about all that money, you kind of get tight, huh? I'm speaking primarily about this political monster that is roaring and scratching and biting in our nation today. How much money has been spent by those political candidates that have now sort of fallen by the wayside and how much is yet to be spent by these two pitiful messes that are in the forefront as we speak. I read a piece today where the bitch, Bitchery Clinton, has about 90 or so million dollars. And this orange-haired chook, Donald Trump, he um, reportedly had one million, but he, I guess the, the donations and the contributions and what have you have been coming in because now he's pulled within $10 million of the bitch, Bitchery Clinton, with $80 million to be spent. And when you think of how it's going to be spent, you cringe. Uh, wait a minute, hold on a second. I think the exec has something uh, um, update. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just had to shake my head, and my brother caught that when looking at these uh, figures. Amount raised so far by candidates, 904 million. 904. Amount raised so far by super PACs supporting the candidates, 494 million. So you might as well say one billion. If you add them up, it's pretty close. Those numbers are astounding. They're even more than I thought they were. And, and you think of what the money is being raised for. Wait, what do you got? I made a mistake saying it was close to one billion because that would have had to have been 500 and 500, so it's past that. There was nine plus almost five is well oh, past yeah, that's, yeah, that's So it's one, one point something million, you know. 1.3 uh, 1. 1. 1. 1. million. 1.4? It's almost 1.3 million because it's 494 million. Might as well raise that up to 500. 5 plus 9, you know. Yes, 1.4. 1.4 million. Yeah. I mean, th these numbers are mind boggling. And when you think of what they're going to do with it, it makes you shake your head and, and <laughs> may make you say some words that Webster don't know anything about. Because they're going to spend it up on nasty ad campaigns to try to tear each other down. Um, when you think of how that money could be spent to the benefit of our country, um, boosting up our military so that our fighting men and women have all the equipment and proper training they need to go out and do their jobs, which is to get rid of terrorists and what have you that come in to try to hurt us. When you think about um, people that are out there starving, including our veterans, and how that money could be placed into getting our veterans and our other citizens off the streets and into proper housing. When you think of things that could be uh, done to improve our infrastructure, to keep our country from literally falling apart because these dumb politicians have been so at the forefront of making sure these foreigners that are brought in here have everything they not necessarily need but want. And you think of all of this money going to waste. It's ridiculous. And the hurting thing of it all is we won't even get a good president out of it. We'll either get a bitch on wheels or we'll get some orange-haired chook man-child that will take us from sugar to that other stuff that starts with a SH. And it, it you know, if I had, say, 10% of that one point. Four billion dollars, just one percent. I could set myself up in a new home, maybe a couple of new cars, and still have enough to live on two or three lifetimes. Probably an airplane too. Oh yeah, knowing me, I would have an airplane. Yeah, <laughs> throw an airplane in there. <laughs> 
you know, I would have enough to live out three lifetimes. It's just mind boggling when you look at the problems we're in versus the money that they're spending for bloody nothing. It, it makes you want to scream. It really does. Then we have a candidate in the Green Party who is trying her best to get up to the mark, but these other two are so far ahead of her in the game, it, it's, it's not even funny. I got a um, notification today from a young lady who thanked us for bringing Jill Stein to her attention. She never knew the lady existed. And they call this a democracy where there's so much one-sidedness, unfairness to the political process by which we are supposed to elect our leaders. You know, my brother and I, the exec, we're kicking around some things about what's going on around our nation. And we were thinking back to Reagan, Ronald Reagan, Republican, served two terms, really did remarkable things for our economy. And we were wishing that something like that could happen again because, you know, um, it, it's, it's hard to sit up and, and, and wish for things because the, the only thing about wishing is it's fun to do, but it most oftentimes never comes true. Even with going out there and, and, and working and, and, I mean, sweating and, and, and scuffling and pushing, that doesn't work either. And that is bad because that's the theme by which both of these greedy, stupid, ignorant, I can't think of enough bad things to say about these stupid parties, the Republicans and the Democrats. That was their theme. If you work hard in this country, you can be anything you want to be. And my mother and my father told me, bull crap. Unless you're in some kind of Illuminati or one of these secret societies or what have you that push you along, uh, you may not make it. Or unless you've got one heck of a lot of luck coming your way. That old adage rings true. It's not what you know, it's who you know. With these secret societies and all of these little, uh, like the Masons and the, uh, the, what are these other people? Uh, the Masons and the... It, it escapes me. Bill, Bill Berg Society. Bill Berg Society and other skulls and bones. Skulls and bones and bags of crap or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're in one of these things, yeah, they're going to push you as far as you want to go and even beyond that. But what about us regular folk? What do we do while we sit here, most of the time with our stomachs growling and, and the bill collector scratching at the door? We sit here and we watch somebody like Bitchery Clinton and Donald the orange-haired chook. Trump spent all this money on bloody nothing. Oh, she's not fit to run for office. Oh, he's not fit to run for office. Oh, bulletin, neither one of them are fit to run for office. And we gotta look at them spend billions of dollars to say that about each other when we could put that money to much better use? It's mind-boggling how trivial and trifling these two really are. And at the end of the day, we're left on, uh, asking the same age old question. What good would it do to have either, either one of them in there? So back to what the exec and I were talking about. You know, it, it's just uncanny how greedy these people are. Now you take old bastard. He's been in there for two terms. Might as well say eight years he's been in there. This time is really short. Um, now, Unless something interesting happens, we're going to get another Democrat in the, in the White House. That's not fair. We've put up with two terms of these bastards. What makes anybody think we'd want to put up with a third term? It should be written, and it should be done, that if you are in a certain party and you were fortunate enough to be elected twice, then the third term automatically goes to the opposing side. Now, that would mean that if obaster has been in there for two years, which he has, under my new plan, then the voting would only be opened up to 
the Republicans, and the independent parties. You pick a president from one of those two groups. Uh, Democrats, you had your chance. You know, nobody wants to be bothered, especially if you were a stinker. I mean, who wants to continue on the, the philosophies and the supposed legacies of a stinker? Good Lord. But it just shows, you know, it's so one-sided, so greedy, and then we're stuck in the middle. Half the country maybe wants the bitch, and then half of the country maybe wants Donald the orange-haired chook, Trump. And then uh, there's that other half, <laughs> three halves. You say, what kind of fuzzy math are you doing, Phil? But there's that other half, that third half, that doesn't want either one of them. A lot of those people don't know what the heck to do because they haven't really been introduced to the independent parties, the Green Party, um, or whatever other party there is. And so they don't know these people exist. So they're sitting out there on the fence saying, what'll it do, what'll it do, what'll it do? And a lot of them may not even go to the polls. So we're going to have an unequal representation of who is really supposed to be the president of the United States. The man-child or the bitch on wheels. Well, just like they said, and I'm repeating myself uh, from another show, alien versus predator, whichever one wins, we lose. And with that, uh, see what the exec has cooking over there. Well, just some more crazy numbers. Uh, I went to a different website, and actually it still comes out to about 1.4 billion. Um, I was just looking at every single candidate. This website actually lists every single candidate that ran, period. Uh, Lincoln Chaffee, Mark Evers, Everson, Jim Gilmore, Jim Webb, Lawrence Lessing, George Pataki, Rick Santorum, Martin O'Malley, Mike Huckabee, Lindsey Graham, Bobby Jindal, or Piyush Jindal, I think it is. Yeah, Piyush. Rick Perry, Rand Paul, Carly Fiorina, Chris Christie, Scott Walker, John K Kasich, Ben Carson, Marco Rubio, Jeb Bush, Ted Cruz, Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton. Um, before actually just repeating the name associated with each money amount, that kind of doesn't make any sense. So I'll just list off the numbers in the order I just spoke them. Or maybe I'll just put the I'll put the names with the E. It doesn't matter. From the very bottom, the lowest ever raised for their campaign: Lincoln Chaffee, four hundred eighteen thousand; Mark Everson, four hundred thirty-one thousand. Jim Gilmore, 729,000. Jim Webb, 777,000. And it keeps, keeps incrementally going up. Lawrence Lessing, 1.26 million. George Pataki, 2.11. Rick Santorum, 2.14. 7.17. Martin O'Malley, 9.32. Mike Huckabee. Lindsey Graham, 10.2. Bobby Jindal, 10.9. Rick Perry, 15.5. Rand Paul, 23.8. Tyler Fiorina, 26.5. Chris Christie, 29.1. Scott Walker, 40.1. Now it's jumping up a little more. John Kasich, 54.6. Ben Carson, 80.7. Now it's jumping up really high. Marco Rubio, 127 million. Jeb Bush, 157. Ted Cruz, 159. Sanders, 235. Trump, 97.7. And the biggest one, 384 million raise. All these numbers just being rifled off. And... Yeah. and <laughs> And some of them just being wasted because they're no longer running. You know that. What I could do with that kind of bread? <laughs> I mean, good. That ain't a few crumbs or a slice. That's a whole bakery plus a few outlets. Mm. Yeah. Because and, and what do we get from all that? What do we get? Not a refund because all that money was given to them and it's gone now. Half of them you don't even remember their names now. Now you got the orange-haired chook Trump. And you got the bitch, Bitchery Clinton, and, and they're raising bukus of money and spending bukus of money on bloody nothing. Just negative ads against each other. And we got people out there in the streets. As I look across the city of Los Angeles, we got people out there hungry, despite what these people are saying, Garcetti and all the rest of them. We got people out there hungry, camped out under freeway overpasses and boxes. We've got veterans out there who have served their countries well with honorable discharges our heroes our wonderful personnel out there on the streets hungry we've got roadways that are collapsing 
We've got bridges that are collapsing. We have inadequate airports and railways and shipping lanes. Our, our whales are getting chewed up by uh, ship propellers. I mean, things are falling apart, and yet we've got these political people, these political idiots, spending all this money for bloody nothing. And like I said, end result, we won't even get a good president out of it. You got to have somebody in there that you're scared of. They're going to start a war or they're going to let all of these murderous people in our countries to further kill us and take down the rest of our buildings. I mean, at what point do people wake up and say, enough is enough. We know what you're all about. We know that you're a blowhard, you're a pompous ass, that you're quick tempered, you're thin skinned, and you'll jump at any fly that happens to land on your window. Or you're just a creep that will do anything to further your own sadistic purpose, which nobody really knows, you know, to further destroy the country, to pick up the slack where, where old bastard left off. So th these are your two choices. But yet, you hang tough. They're saying that possibly uh, the Rislugglicans are preparing if he should drop out. And then somebody said, breaking news. Hillary Clinton has dropped out the bench. I wish they'd both drop out. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, they both can drop off the face of the earth. We'd be better without any of them. And let somebody go in there that will try to help us. And in my case, that would be an independent. I don't want to see the Rislug Lincolns. I don't want to see the Democrats. We've had them forever in a dark day. They have screwed us on every level. They have made horrible deals. They've blocked good deals. They've done everything under the sun but give the United States her due and her people their due. I don't want to see either one of these two parties go from here to there. I want to see them away for a while. Let the independents go in there and see what they can do. I'm tired of resluglicans. I'm tired of Democrats, because when it comes to those two parties, the both of them are nothing but crap. And um, did you have anything before we close? Uh, just an idea that you know popped in my, into my head. All this money spent, $1.4 billion, that could be used to get all the homeless off the street, put them into rehab, and they could be generating money for the United States to help the economy out. All that money spent with the exception of the current candidates that are still running, is basically already spent or gone. And there's going to be more because, <laughs> like I said, if you thought it was bad before, you ain't seen nothing yet because we got quite a little ways between now and November the 8th. And you're going to be seeing mud slinging like you've never seen. In fact, mud, it's going to be a whole gravel pit being thrown. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's going to break it up a little bit is the Olympics because that lasts for two weeks. But after the Olympics is over... Look out for squalls. That's right. It's going to be nasty. You might have to get a mop and put it right before the TV because all that, that, that muck and mire is going to be dripping off the TV and making a mess on your living room floors. I mean, it's going to be nasty. Anyway, um, too much money being spent for nothing. That's American politics. Probably everybody's politics. But like I said, I live here in America. America is my focus. That's the nastiness. That's the over-bloated money bag known as American politics. Uh, we're moving along quite well. Pretty soon we'll be in the weekend. Hey, how many of you guys are going to be on tune uh, tomorrow night for the uh, opening ceremonies down in Rio? Uh, that, that's a mess. Uh, their country is so screwed up. They had four years to prepare for their Olympics, and it's a mess. People have been getting mugged. A woman, one of the athletes got raped. A lot of people are leaving, going back home. They said, metal isn't worth this. The swimming uh, events that are not going to be held at an aquatic center, that, that, you know, different events have to be held outside in rivers and streams. The well, water is so filthy over there. The flies even gag when they land on it. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's disgusting to know that there's trouble and crap all over the world. And either somebody's too greedy or somebody spent up all the money or whatever, but it all comes back down to mismanagement and malfeasance. So anyway, I'm going to be watching that. Uh, hopefully I can stand it. It may be a mess. I may want well to turn that off too. But um, to the extent possible, keep that smile on your face. Uh, try to stay safe and try to stay sane in this nutty world we live in. 
Let's dump the hate and increase the peace. We'll see you next time on the Phil Taylor Jones Show. Bye-bye.